Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro and Expert Ed Division with various win for the Quail Hollow, Southern Pines and Sunshine Glades, which makes the Thanksgiving tournament here for the year of 2023. Before we take a closer look at all the content, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that are looking to improve your game even more, scan the QR code here on the screen or you use the link patreon.com slash golfclashtommy that is in the description down below. Low. That will take you to all our premium guide packages and we offer premium guides for checkpoint challenge, tour play and tournament play. Last but not least, uh, follow the info box on the right hand side for the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also a ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. For hole number four of the Southern Pines, which is hole number one in the Thanksgiving tournament, we are adding 5.8 topspin and three right spin. The intention here now is to get the ball as far down the fairway possible without rolling into the rough. You can see I'm aiming center down the fairway with 5.8 topspin and three right spin. I like to use three right spin here, and the reason I like to use that is due to the fact that the second shot will, in my opinion, be a bit easier because you will be a bit more flexible when it comes to your setup and can adapt for if you have a glitch rolls like this or dead bounces on your drive now this is way too close <laughs> to get to the rough line here but uh so try to pitch it a little bit shorter if you can now second shot we are playing with our grizzly and the grizzly here is going to be played like somewhat around 20 percent club here in this particular video but it's very important that you if you do not have a check to follow meaning pin check fringe check rough check or something like that then you have to move to max and you have to move to min to estimate your club distance now using the green ring which is the inner ring to be by the rough line one top spin to three right spin the reason i aim so close to the rough line is because the further back we are the more inclined we are to get a glitch roll and that glitch roll would then like shoot us across the green and that would be very sad if that would happen now this rough bump can be played in many different ways but in the end though an eagle is definitely a possibility no elevation on the second shot here On hole number two, which is also hole number two of the Sunshine Glades, we're going to play a rough bomb. There is a sticky spot there, which we call a funnel, and that we're trying to catch. Here, I'm looking to use a little bit of right spin to get away two top spin uh, ball guideline, three green square through the hole. You may be wondering, will you always have to have the ball guideline like that? No, if you do have a tailwind, the ball guideline needs to be a little bit shorter. And if it is a crosswind, ball guideline needs to be also a little bit shorter than the video. So uh, the headwind is compressing the ball guideline, meaning that we will fall short in line if we are not having uh, the ball guideline far through the hole enough. Um, for correct speed max plus 10 p2 numbers is what i'm using here to get this ball to drop and have in mind though that the elevation and the club distance can be used in different ways to give yourself different type of uh, numbers uh, and adapt for the different type of uh, wind direction you may or so have of t On the drive, start with a uh, quarterback in complete max distance with a power a power three ball. White train to the left by the rough line. Swap to a puck and sniper bag. Four top spin, and we're gonna go half a bar of right spin. Adjustment is gonna be max plus ten p two. And once we have adjusted for max plus ten p two, we are going to go full curl to the left with max over power with a completely slow needle. Perfect ball it is, and we see the first ball, its first bounce be on the fairway, and the second bounce obviously on the fairway too, and then we roll nicely to around 355 yards. 
on the second shot we're gonna use a three right spin and then whatever top spinner gets the ball guideline to the hole and this is by having the top of the yellow ring to be by the rough line it's gonna be somewhere between one and a half to 1.8 top spin generally so finding the spot as we would like obviously double check so it is as we want perfect and then we are having 66 percent slider with a 10 percent elevation p3 numbers from plus four and then we're adding or, su or subtracting 0 0.1 for every yard center the ball and hit perfect and this is going to be a good chance for a drop on a tricky and somewhat fairly difficult par 5 in my opinion. You can see as well that I'm adding some left curl where we're doing some wind angle tweaks here also to be absolutely spot on. Bounce up and rolls up and we're getting this one to drop dead center. For hold number 4 the drive here we're gonna lay up short and we're gonna lay up on the pad that is there in the water you can see i'm uh, starting at p3 min line with our quarterback using three right spin and four top spin intention here now is to clip the rough with my second bounce to roll out nicely on the fairway and at least uh, like focus on consistency can you send this hole yes you can can you send this hole when you have a headwind i would not recommend so from the second tee if you do have a crosswind, yeah, with some topspin boost or like a max OP play with a high powered ball. If you do have a tailwind, then the send it would probably be the best possible way here to grab the eagle. The only thing that you have to have in mind here with this hold now is that they have put some stupid signs at the back of the green. Which means that if you go too long, you risk getting stuck behind the signs. And that is not something that has been there before, but it's something that is there now. Second shot, now I'm trying to catch a little funnel from here and you can see me uh, with my Grizzly. I'm using the three left spin and four top spin. If you don't have four top spin on your Grizzly, then you can play with the Goliath instead. Now, there is a little sticky spot here. We're not entirely into that. We should be a little bit more left, I think. And adjust is going to be no elevation. Uh, together with your true club distance or if you do have a pin check fringe check or a rough check or something like that to follow i do like this type of play though from a consistency standpoint and that's in the end what wins tournament a turn a tournament is not won by taking the most risks the tournament is won by playing consistent and taking calculated risks and in this case with that win we had of t a layup is definitely the way to play in my opinion For hole number five, we are going to look for the yellow ring to the left by the sand with the red ring to be by the rough line. Then we're going to apply whatever side spin and top spin that gets the ball guideline into the hole. And here we're going to make an adjustment that's going to be max minus 10% elevation P0 numbers. And then we're going to make slight curl tweaks depending on different wind angles. Center the ball and hit perfect and this is going to be a good chance you can see we bounce very much centered into the rough and i've been hitting a great left and that's fine i have not tested for great right So for hole <coughs> number three in the 9 hole cup here we're gonna play with a power slice and we're gonna use a four top spin to right spin I'm gonna use a tight you see I'm stretching out to be just to the left of the brown rough patch there by all the trees Max over power max curl to the right and then full slice to the right The idea here is to get the ball as far down to the right possible you may be wondering why do you complicate it so much to go with a power slice it's because that's the i would say that's the only way 
to get to where we are now and therefore the only way to get ourselves into a very good chance for an albatross let's say that you have headwind from t you can't play this type of shot you're gonna have to then play just straight down the fairway and then transport the ball to green with a cataclysm or a big dog to make sure that you secure the eagle so it's only gonna be an eagle play if that's going to happen but if we do have tailwind once again we can play the drive that i showed on screen and then we get ourselves in a super good chance for an albatross measure the club distance to get the correct club distance here and we're going to play this with 20 percent elevation you see here now i'm measuring the club distance to see what type of range i'm in i position myself here on the fairway i'm not using any spin for this shot you can obviously use backspin or topspin if you would like but i like to play without any spins if I have room to do that because it gives me a very natural first and second bounce and that is easier for me at least to read. Once again 20% elevation, center the ball, hit perfect and this is going to be a super good chance for an albatross. Bounce, 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 can we get it? We can swirl it in from the right and 180 in the hole. I will take that all day and every day on a top par 5 such as uh, the Southern Pines. On the drive, we start with the quarterback at max P5 line. Doesn't have to be a luminary here. You can play with a win two, win three, or even a win one if you would like to. I do recommend a win three ball though, as of the adjust on the second shot, definitely is preferred with lesser wins. 4.8 topspin, then swap to an um, apocalypse and sniper bag, adjust max plus 10 uh, P4, and then it's max over power with a slow needle, and try to hit perfect. Great left and great right are just fine, but this is a difficult par 4, a long one, and we're gonna end up with a sniper on the second shot, which is going to be a difficult one to consistently drop. We're looking to get our drive distance to around 380 yards. On the second shot, we're gonna add spins first, the spin A, which is two left and one back. And then we're gonna push up from min, so we get the ball guideline to be one green square short of the pin. And you can see here how glitchy everything is, and it's all about finding a decent spot. So one green square uh, before the hole, then I'm changing to one and a half back spin and one and a half left spin. You can see here that the offset is pretty big to the right and sure you can go with the ball guideline directly there but I like to start by aiming at the hole first and then do a spin swap for more consistency. Now when it comes to the adjustment we are going to go rings from min with our sniper and we're going to use P5 numbers um, and we're going to in this instance we are going to go no elevation P5 numbers. And we're dropping a dead center for a lovely eagle here on a tough hole such as hole number seven. Hole number eight, it's a tougher hole than what it looks like. Now I'm playing an NMT using two backspin and 1.7 right spin. Adjust is going to be max plus 10 P3. And then we are looking to use the bank, so we're going to roll up the green and then have the ball fall back down. The difficult part here is to obviously have the right direction of the ball when it rolls back towards the pin. There is no big funnel here we can rely on, so you have to be spot on. There are rough bumps, sand bumps that you can play. But the way we, you see here in the video is the most conservative way to play this hole because it will always give you a short and sweet birdie pot and it will also give you a chance for an hole in one. For hole number nine and option number one we are going to play with the rock to lay up on the right hand side. The reason this is going to be option number one is because we're going to have one play in crosswind and headwinds and one play in tailwinds. So, max plus 10, we're using four bars of topspin and all the side spin to the left possible. 
and I'm using the rock here. So even if I'm using overpower with the rock, it has such a massive uh, and good accuracy uh, that um, that even with some great balls here, we will still be safe. The goal here is to get the ball to be close to the rough, but not close enough so we're dangering rolling into it. Second shot, we play with our sniper, and here we can do two ways. One, we can go for a rough bump if we do have the distance enough. Or two, we're going to bounce on the fairway before the rough. And I would say this is the more likely way of playing it if we do have a headwind in crosswinds or maybe a slight tailwind on the second shot the rough bump i would say is definitely going to be a very uh, very valid play to play so 10 percent elevation through club distance a spin uh, to be just through the hole in headwind in crosswind spin to pin so we're not going in and in coming into hot and then we do have a perfect ball here in the end and we are obviously crossing our fingers to get this one drop for an albatross when the camera turns around we know it's going to be close will it drop yes it does this time and that's a nice one to have in our back pocket if we do have a crappy wind here so option number one we do have a sniper or like a rock and a sniper play and then we're going to take a look at a little bit more aggressive play with a very good chance to succeed for an albatross if the wind is correct from t Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this playthrough for Pro and Expert Division with various wins for the Thanksgiving Tournament, a mix of the Quail Hollow, Southern Pines, and the Sunshine Glades. Make sure to scan the QR code here on the screen or go directly to patreon.com slash goldclashtommy for premium guides for Checkpoint Challenge, Tour Play, and Tournament Guides. Thank you once again for watching, and wish you the best of luck in your Gold Clash game.